from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power. He's done it all for you and me. So I just want to bless your name. I just want to make you glad. And I just want to move your heart, God. And give you all I am. Yes, Lord Jesus. Just want to bless your name. Oh, I just want to bless your name And I just want to make you glad Thank you I just want to move your heart, God Give you all I am Let's just really move into that now. Come on. We want to bless his name. I just want to bless your name. Just want to bless your name. And I just want to make you glad. And I just want to move your heart, God, to give you all I
lift you higher. Come on. Come and lift him higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you glory. Yes, Jesus. Keep praising his name. Oh, come on, sing out by his will. And by your will, yeah. It's for your pleasure I exist. Lift up his name. Jesus, we lift you up. Lift you higher. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, I lift you up so much higher. Yes, Lord. Come on, just sing out your praise to him. Say thank you. Say I love you. I love to be with you. Say thank you. Jesus, we lift you up higher and higher. We worship you, Lord. that I could be It's like every time I take one step something right in front of me Lord where would I be without your grace and mercy oh now I have one question Lord why me you change you change You spoke and I was so Why I'll never know 
my life was headed out of control somehow i shifted into overload but then you came and did a work in me out of everything i once was somehow you saw a masterpiece you, you changed, changed my whole life My hands lifted in the air. I give you all the praise. You're the only one that could have led me out of this maze. But what you saw in me, I don't know. But Lord, I'm glad that you saw it. And every piece of me that was a mystery. John, the fifth chapter, we've been studying here and we want to continue that study. So if you will look there with me, we will look at the third verse. Jesus has come into the area of the sheep pool market, or the sheep market pool, uh, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, and he sees this scene. A great number of people, a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered. They were waiting for the stirring or the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, and whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, thirty and eight years, which had an infirmity. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus say, saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I'm excited about what you have promised. I'm excited about what you're about to do through the preaching of the word and the signs and wonders that confirm the word. I thank you, Lord, that as we stand in all of you, that, God, there is an amazing thing that takes place. There is a transmittal from the throne of grace to us in our time of need. And that, God, through the awesome name of Jesus, Father, we can proclaim victory in every situation that we find ourselves. So I thank you today that we will hear what the Spirit is saying and that we will be blessed of the Lord. Thank you for that now in Jesus' name. And you know what you said. Amen. Amen. Here's a man who is sitting by the pool of Bethesda. And we learned some things about this guy. He's been there for 38 years. He's impotent. Every time the stirring of the water happens, 
he doesn't get into the pool. And he tells Jesus, uh, you know, I've been here a long time, and every time I try to get in, somebody beats me in. And we learn that probably over the course of the years, his, uh, his infirmity became part of his identity. And because it was part of his identity, it was hard to separate himself from who he was but versus who God says he is. I want you to understand something. It doesn't matter what your situation say about you. What does God say about you? Somebody say amen, please. Your senses are screaming to be acknowledged for all their hurts and their pains and everything else that they want you to acknowledge. The still small voice inside of you, however, is saying greater is he that's in you than everything that's screaming against you on the outside. Please say amen. And what we've got to learn and what we've been learning to do is we've got to move past our identity infirmities and move on to our victory declarations. Amen. And we learned this and left off this, at this place last week. The level of trust you put into your senses will determine the level of faith you walk in. The level of trust you put into your senses now, that's not denying your senses. If you have an earache, how many know you have an earache? But how many know you're healed by the stripes of Jesus for that ear earache? Somebody say amen. And so, yes, you can have your senses tell you things and declare to you things, but what we need to grasp hold of is that greater is he, that faith that's inside of me is more and stronger and better and higher than anything on this level plane of the natural realm. Say amen, please. And then because we discovered that and understood that, we learned this one thing. We learned that our future is not based on our past. I said our future is not based on our past. It doesn't matter how bad our past was. It doesn't matter what we did yesterday. What matters is that our future is intact and God's still on the throne controlling the destiny that you and I have. Please say amen to that. And of course, the thing that brings reality to pass, the thing that brings the promises of God to manifestation is the promise of your faith in his hope that it might produce what he's promised to do. Hello? I know that was confusing, so let me say it this way. You need the hope of your future to release your now faith. Isn't that cool? You need the hope that tomorrow's going to be better than yesterday. I said, you need the hope that tomorrow's going to be better than yesterday. Well, what about today? I'm planting seeds for tomorrow. Today is my seed planting day. Yesterday what, what is what was, tomorrow what's going to be. Today is what am I planting to make sure that tomorrow is better than yesterday. Hello. See, I can't keep doing the same things that I did yesterday and hope tomorrow's going to be better. I got to do something different to ensure that tomorrow, the hope of tomorrow will give me the strength of my faith for today. Come on, this is good preaching. See, we got to stop living in our past because it withholds the promises of our future. We can't be determined and we can't be holding on and we can't be sad and we can't be sorrowful of what happened yesterday. I no longer have control of yesterday. I have control of today, which is going to direct and influence my tomorrow. And I don't know about you, but for me, that past is not holding me captive. My future is set and secure on what I believe today. Somebody say amen. Now, I want to go back to this man. He's sitting by the pool. He's been there 38 years. <laughs> Jesus says to him, do you want to be healed? 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 When I read that, I felt the Lord say something to me. 
I felt the Lord say, you know it takes the same energy to choose healing as it does to choose helplessness. It's going to take as much faith, it's going to take as much energy, it's going to take as much believing to believe in helplessness as it is for hope. It's going to take as much healing, or as much energy, energy to choose, I'm going to be healed by the stripes of Jesus than to stay in this helpless situation where nothing ever changes. You ever notice how much time you spend on those things that could be, that never become? You ever notice how much in your mind you traffic thoughts that tell you what you're not going to be, what you can't be, what's not happening, what's not going to come to pass? I'm going to tell you something. I have sat and worried about a doctor's appointment wondering what the verdict was going to be when I could have spent the time believing by God the report is good. Now, I learned a lesson, I'll tell you. We, we dropped that helplessness stuff a long time ago, and we started getting into healing. We started believing that God could do the things that no one else could do for us. Please say amen. And we started believing that no matter how much I hurt today, no matter how much I have on my mind today, no matter how kind of situation I find myself in today, tomorrow's going to be better because I put my hope in the promises of the Word of God and I'll be better tomorrow than I was yesterday because today... I've made the choice that I'm going to move forward into the fullness of the promises instead of the fullness of the situation that I find myself. Ooh, let me say that again. I have a choice. I can have the fullness of the situation or I can have the fullness of the promise. The choice is mine. The fullness of the promise says, by his stripes I'm healed. The fullness of the promise says, my God meets all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The fullness of the promise is there for me. I will deliver you out of the hand of the fowler. The promises are there, and I can step into the fullness of that promise, or I can remain helpless in the identity of my infirmity. When I choose helplessness, it leaves me paralyzed. It leaves me paralyzed by the events and by the circumstances and by the failures and by the situations of our lives. And when that begins to happen, when we become paralyzed, when we begin to say there's no hope, when we begin to say, this will never change. When we begin to say, I don't think I can overcome this one. When we begin to say any of those things, we remain paralyzed by the events. And you know what? People leave churches. People leave families. People leave spouses. People leave jobs because they've been convinced in their mind that they are caught in a helpless situation. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is no helpless situations for you. There is always the possibility of change. There is always the possibility of hope. There is always the possibility of promise being fulfilled in your life. And no matter how hard it gets, and Paul said it, look, I'm being persecuted on every side. I don't even know where to take a step next because the bottom is dropped out for me. But this one thing I know, I will not be separated from the promises, which is the love of God. I will not be separated from the promises of the Father of whom I belong. So whatever the situation, I speak to it now for you and tell you, change is on the way and there is hope for tomorrow. Somebody say amen. And I'm going to tell you something. You might as well get over this mentality that it's somebody else's fault, number one, and that somebody else is going to take care of you. Ain't going to happen. 
People search all over for somebody to take care of them. They think they found the right man. They think they found the right woman. Six months later, six years later, they're getting a divorce. What happened there? What happened is they focused on the wrong things. I'm going to get sidetracked here. I got to get back on my notes here. You have to have a mental change. You've got to get to the place where you understand that if I leave this church because they didn't do what I thought they would do, if I leave my husband because he didn't do what he th I thought he would do, if I leave my wife or I abandon my family, whatever, and go looking for something else, it won't be long till you burn that out as well. And you'll be in the same bucket that you just left. Oh, it may be a different color. It may be a different shape, but it comes with the same things. Why? Because you never dealt with victory back here. You took your helplessness and your wounds and your hurt, and you carried them on to the next place, whether it be a new marriage, whether it be a new relationship, a new church, a new job. You cannot carry old baggage into new things and expect God to do a great thing. Somebody say amen. You got to get rid of that baggage. Don't carry that stuff into the next relationship. Don't carry it into the next church. Don't carry it into the next job. You a complainer on this job, you're going to be a complainer on that job no matter how good it is because it'll never be good enough for you unless you break the hold of that thing and get back into a hopeful position that, oh, tomorrow's going to be better than yesterday. Come on, I'm preaching. We got to get rid of that stinking thinking. We got to get to that place where we say, you know, <laughs> it's me and I'm going to take control of my life, and I'm going to stop blaming others for the, the situation I find myself in. You know what that man did? He blamed everybody else around that pool. He said to everybody around, hey, you know, every time I try to get down there in the water, when the angel come down, stir up the water, they all beat me in. Well, move to the edge of the pool. Don't be sitting 14 feet away where somebody else can beat you. Get over by that pool, and the moment that water just begins to stir, fall into it. There's hope at the side of the pool, folks. There's hope at the side of the well, folks. There's hope at the side of the place where God has sanctioned for you to get a drink that will refresh you and restore you and give you hope again. Somebody shout amen. Okay. There's a scripture verse that the enemy constantly attacks. You may not even know the scripture verse. You may know it. You may have heard it. Maybe you even memorized it. But the thing that the enemy will attack on you all the time is really not your faith. We think, oh, he, you know, he's attacking, but no, he's really not. See, because your faith is only part of the equation. The equation says this, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So what he tries to do is destroy your hope. This marriage will never get better. This church is never going to meet your needs. This job will never fulfill you. Whatever, whatever, whatever. He's trying to take the hope away from you. Why? Because hope deferred makes the heart sick. That's the scripture verse that he attacks all the time in us. You know, I've been here at this church for 27 years. It ain't much changed in my life. It ain't my fault. It ain't pastoral staff. These guys put enough food on the table for you week in and week out. They care about you with every ounce of their being week in and week out. If you're just too dumb to sit up to the table and eat some of the food that's being put on, it's not the fault of leadership. It's the fault of whoever sits and does not eat. Start eating. Pick up the fork. 
Last week we picked up the sword. This week, pick up the fork and start eating from the Word of God. Hello, hello, hello. And whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, never give up your hope. I said never give up your hope. Never, ever, ever give up your hope. You know why people commit suicide? They feel hopeless. Never give up your hope. Your hope is a weapon against the enemy that will stand in its place to allow your faith to grab hold of it and activate your faith. See, hope is the catalyst of faith. It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So hope goes out locks in on what you're believing for. I'm believing for my healing. I'm believing for deliverance. I'm believing for financial breakthrough. I'm believing for a new job. I'm believing for a baby. The doctor said we couldn't have children. I'm believing for a baby. Lock your faith in on that hope and never give up, never give up, never give up, never give up. You know why? Because the Bible says this, and I'll bet you I, I just found this scripture just recently. The scripture comes from Ecclesiastics, the ninth chapter, the fourth verse, and it says this, if you're alive, there is hope. Did you hear that? If you're alive, there is hope. In fact, the actual scripture says, for to, who, for to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. There is hope. In other words, as long as I'm alive, there's hope for me. As long as I'm living, Ecclesiastes 9.4 says, as long as I'm on this side of the grass, there's hope for me. When I go under the grass, different story. My hope is fulfilled because I'm sitting with the right hand of God the Father with Jesus. But on this side of the grass, I can have hope. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't give up your hope. Turn to somebody else and say, don't give up your hope. Turn to somebody else and say, hey, as long as you're alive, you got hope. As long as you're alive, you got hope. As long as you're alive, situations are subject to change. As long as you're alive, there's a hope that I'm going to be pain-free. I'm going to be healed of this diabetes. I'm going to be healed of this aching joints and arthritis. I'm going to be healed because I'm alive. And as long as I'm alive, there is hope. And I claim that according to Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, the fourth verse. Whew. Choose hope. This man had to choose hope. Jesus said, will you be made whole? And we, we went all over this, so I don't want to repeat that. But Jesus tells him these words. Rise, in other words, lift your level of thinking. Don't be seeing yourself as a crippled invalid there at the side of the pool that never gets healed. See yourself different. Take an action. Rise. Uh, take up your bed, do something that you didn't, wasn't able to do before. See, that act of taking the bed activated the faith by which he was to rise, and then the manifestation of his healing would take place. And so the man decides to do what Jesus says. And in verse number nine, it tells us what happens when you never surrender your hope. It says there, and immediately. Smile with somebody say, immediately. immediately. Turn to somebody else and say, immediately. immediately. You alive today. You got hope. This man here gets up, takes up his bed, and starts to walk. And the Bible says in verse 9, immediately. Oh, I like that word. And immediately the man was made whole. Immediately. And the man was made whole. Immediately the man was made whole. Well, pastor, I've been in that stinking prayer line so many times. My feet are in, got marks on the carpet and they've sunk down into the concrete. 
I've been there so many times. I've had everybody in this church that prays the prayer of faith pray for me. Ain't nothing happened. I even had the anointed evangelist that came through. I went up there when they didn't even call for a prayer line. I said, I need prayer. Will you pray for me? And he prayed for me or she prayed for me and pfft, nothing. I ain't get nothing. You talk about this immediate stuff, but I, I, I didn't get nothing. This man got healed immediately, but I didn't get nothing. Oh, yeah, you did. Now I want you to get something. I want you to get a picture of this so the devil can never steal this from you again. Coming for prayer. I want to give this to you exactly the way the Lord gave it to me. Coming for prayer. For a healing prayer. Let's stay on healing. Works for every area. Let's stay on healing. Coming for prayer. For healing. Puts you in a place that opens up the door for God to fulfill his promise. The simple act of getting out of your seat and walking to a prayer line and standing there, if it's the first time or the 151st time, opens the possibilities of God's promises to be fulfilled in your life. Somebody say amen. So by the simple act, of me getting out of my seat. Uh, here I am, the, the call for healing has been made. The simple act of getting up and walking up here and standing in the position of readiness opens the door for the scripture verses, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee to work. He sent his word and healed them. You're in a position by an act of faith, that simple getting up and moving to a position of receiving. See, that's what you've done. You've moved to a position of receiving that you can receive God's promises in your life and see them manifested as he has promised. Just getting out of your seat just responding to an altar call. And that works for finances, that works for family problems, job problems, it works for all of it. Just moving from that place to this place starts the journey of faith because there your faith is activated on the hope of what will be manifested here. I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I come up here, or the man or woman of God comes to lay hands on you, and they're about ready to pray the prayer, or it's being prayed from the altar. Here's what happens. Prayer is the hope, the catalyst of promises fulfilled. Prayer is the hope, the catalyst for my healing. So I can stand here and I can say, God, I put myself in a position for you to do your thing. Ah, oh, pastor, I've been there a hundred times and nothing's happened. What happened when nothing happened? What'd you do? You came up here, you had pain in your joints, somebody prayed for you, you went back to your seat and you had the same pains in your joint. And you probably went back to your seat and you said, oh, well, there's another prayer wasted. Oh, well, I, you know, I thought I was getting healed that time. Maybe the next time, you know, but right now, 
You know, I don't understand. Let me explain something to you. God doesn't have to heal you the way you want to be healed. He's got three ways in which he heals, and he can use any one of those three ways to heal you. If you know him, you'll get your healing. It doesn't matter whether you get it right here or not. It doesn't matter whether it's immediate like this guy. Yeah, God does that, but why does he do it? He does it for his glory. He does it for your faith. He does it as a hope for others, as a testimony of his faithfulness to his promises. He does it for many people. Simon's mother-in-law, Peter came in, she was sick. He prayed and boom, she was instantly healed. The woman with the issue of blood, she was immediately healed. This dude right here, he was immediately healed. But let me take you to a place. For those of us who don't get this immediate healing here at the altar or when the man or woman of God prays for you instantly, I want you to hold your place. We're coming back here, but move over to the book of Luke. Go on over to the book of Luke, the 17th chapter. I want to show you something that will give you hope again, that will restore your hope when you come to the altar of God and you're prayed for and you don't receive your healing. And there are some things you won't know whether you've been healed till you're tested by a doctor. There are some things you won't know until the week goes by. Last week, we prayed for financial breakthroughs. How many here were prayed for? And today, this week, one week later, have saw some change in their financial situation. Praise God. Look, hands up, going all over. God's prayers work. Somebody say amen. Turn to someone right now and tell them God's prayers work. So we saw that this man in verse 9 was immediately healed. In Luke, the 17th chapter, I want to look there at the 12th verse. Jesus came into a city in Samaria, Samaria and Galilee. And he, as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go, so your, go show yourselves unto the priest. Now, get this next statement. In fact, if you're smart, like I was, I underlined it. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. I come to the altar. I'm prayed for by the man or woman of God. I may even be anointed, but I don't receive my healing this moment. So as I turn to go, I turn to that verse and I say, well, maybe I didn't get it here, but by the time I get back to my seat, I'm going to get my healing. When I get to my seat, if I still haven't gotten it, I say to myself, when this service is dismissed, by the time I get out in the four year, I'm going to get my healing. If I still don't get it there by the time I get in my car, by the time I drive my car home, by the time I go out in the kitchen and cook a big meal for my family, by the time I wash up the dishes, by the time I iron the afternoon clothes for the week, by the time I wake my wife back up after I've done all those things, Ladies, you missed an opportunity to say amen there. Then I'll get my healing. If I don't get it, then I'll get it when I lay my head down tonight. If I don't get it when I wake up, I'll get it on my way to work. Do you get it? You never lose hope. All because you didn't get it here doesn't mean you're not going to get it. It means it's just coming a different way. And that different way with God is as they went their way. Somebody say amen. You know what's interesting? They got healed as they went their way, and they went their way with the same disease that they asked him to heal. And it was only till they went their way that they received their healing. And how many of them was there? Huh? How many? Everybody say Ted. It worked for 10 of them. Not just one. One came back and thanked him, but it worked for all 10. It worked for every one of them. 
They didn't get it immediately. They had to go their way. Who knows how far they had to go? They may have been two miles down the road. They may have been 50 feet. Who knows? They didn't get it that incident, that instant, but they got it as they went their way. Here's the good news. Hope's still alive. Somebody say amen. amen. Hope is still alive. 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 Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So if you don't get what you were expecting to receive at the altar, start claiming that you'll get it on your way. But what happens, Pastor? If I come to the altar... Didn't get it. It's been 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 months, and I still haven't gotten my healing. What do I do then? Keep hope alive. Tell somebody, keep hope alive. Tell somebody else, keep hope alive. Tell somebody else, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. See, you give up your faith by giving up your hope. That's why you've got to keep your hope alive for this reason, that if you didn't get it here and you didn't get it on your way, is there no hope left? Of course there is. Look in your Bible. Let me give you this last thing before we close today. Back over in John, the fourth chapter. If you kept your place in the fifth, that's right on the opposite side of the page. In John the fourth chapter. We want to read there beginning at the 49th verse. Jesus came into, the, into Cana in the Sea of Galilee, and while he was there, a certain nobleman heard that he was there, and that nobleman had a son who was sick, and it was apparently unto death. So he comes and he meets the man, and he meets him in verse number 12. So look at verse number 12 with me. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, in verse 49, I'm sorry. In verse 49, the noble man saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word, 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 and the man believed the word. And then what did he do? He went his way. What did he do? He went believing the word that was spoken to him. Let me read that again, because this is a key for you right now. And Jesus saith unto him, 50th verse, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And he went his way. He believed the word. Yeah, but Jesus spoke to this man. <laughs> his father spoke to you. I'm the Lord thy God that healeth you. I shall provide all your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. By his stripes you're healed. You shall know no things evil formed against you because it won't prosper. See, God has spoken to us, family. God has spoken. Just like Jesus spoke to this man, God speaks to us through his word. The man goes his way. Now, now, now watch this. This is really cool. The man goes his way. Into the verse 50, 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. In other words, 
What was the time he began to heal? And if you read the rest of that verse, you find out that the man determined it was exactly at the time that Jesus spoke to him and said, thy son liveth. That's why it's important for you to read your word so that you get from God the word spoken to you so you can start believing that if I didn't get it at the altar and I didn't get it on the way out, God's going to heal me over time and I'm not giving up that promise. I am holding on to it because my hope is rooted and grounded in him. Never give up your hope. There's always tomorrow and there's always the possibility he will do it. Somebody say amen. Now, you're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to believe that God will heal you. There's a scripture verse. You may want to write a couple of these down here quickly. Psalm 71, 14, but I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. I didn't get healed at the altar. I didn't get healed going my way. But over time, God has healed me day by day. And I don't care what he's used to heal me, whether he's used my faith in him alone or my faith in the doctor that did the surgery. I didn't have surgery, but I'm giving you an example. Or gave you an injection or gave you a prognosis or whatever. I'm believing I got healed. Your hope will be the anchor of your soul. So you don't want to give up your hope because when the tough times come and you're about ready to waver and you're about ready to fumble and you're about ready to fail, your hope keeps, it, keeps you alive and striving one more day, one more day, one more day, one more day, one more day. Hebrews 6, 18, that by two immutable and movable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, comfort, advocate, exhortation in us who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. I'm going to put you on the spot now. Hope you can remember the scripture, but in case you can't, I got it written down. We believed God for Helen's heart when she was healed, when she got the prognosis that her heart was working at 25%. And this is several years back now. We believed that when we prayed for her and anointed her, she would be healed immediately. She was not. Then we believed that every day that she would be healed as we went our way and did this. But God had already spoken to her and gave her a scripture verse, and that scripture verse said? It said that um, uh, he would take care of it. Do not, I, I'm not giving you word for word. I'm giving it all of Helen Myers. Okay. But anyway, these things will come to pass. Slowly but surely. Do not be disappointed, but they shall come to pass. Slowly but surely they shall come to pass. For all you scripture aficionados, that's from Habakkuk. Two, three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. Never, ever, ever give up your hope and never, ever give up your healing. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Come on, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Come on, come on. You're not giving up your hope. I don't care what situation you find yourself in. It, if it doesn't happen immediately, it's coming. It's going to happen as you go your way. And if it doesn't happen as you go your way, you're going to stand on the promise and stand on top of the circumstance. Who did you get that part? That's not even in the message. Here's a freebie. When you stand on faith, you stand on top of your circumstance or your situation. You get that? You hear that? Let me say that one more time. When you stand on faith, you stand on top 
of your situation. You know what that is? You're the head and not the tail. Bow your heads with me. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There are folks here this morning. You need a healing in your body. You may have been prayed for a hundred times. You may have come to this altar and gone away thinking this is your cross to bear. But I'm here to tell you this is not your cross to bear. This is your promise to receive. So I just say thank you, Lord. I just say thank you, Lord. I just say thank you, Lord. That if they're sick in body, there is healing for you right now. Whether it comes in the form of immediate manifestation or as you go your way or you begin to amend, today the word is speaking to you for health. Today the word is speaking to you that if you need a financial breakthrough, his word says, I'll meet all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, Jesus, Jesus. If you need a healing, you need a breakthrough, You've been prayed for before and you haven't seen anything happen. But you're ready for that change today. You're ready right now to see God bring forth what he's promised to bring. Get up out of your seat and join me at the altar right now. Quickly, quickly, you need a healing. You need a financial breakthrough. You need a relationship healing. You need God to do something. Get up here right now, quickly. Quickly, just stand right here. Stand right here. This is what God is about to do. This is his promises being fulfilled. Your hope is not gone. Your hope is not lost. You're not in a helpless situation. You are in a place where God now can move. You have just broken the bondages of doubt and fear, and you have moved into a place of reception. Come on right now. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This is what God wants to do for you today. And if you don't get this immediately today, don't you dare walk out of here saying, well, I guess I didn't get it. You're going to walk out of here saying, by the time I make my car, I'll get my healing. Anyone else, last chance. Everybody in the congregation, extend your hands towards these folks that are standing here. They're standing here trusting and believing today that God is going to do something amazing that they're going to see the healing manifestation. They're going to see the power of the living God. Pastoral staff, come on and join me as we pray for these people really quickly. Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I wanted to let you know our church family would love to have you join us here in the sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Those services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study, Royal Rangers for the boys and G3 for the girls. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God and it happens at 7.15 every Wednesday evening. If you'd like more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of a great church. Well, until our family meets your family on our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and yours.